on, there's Pastor Steve. You've made your mama happy. Now she gets to see your face. All right, let us prepare our hearts and our minds and our bodies to uh, join together in worship. Okay, we're about to begin. This dry and desert land, I tell myself, keep walking on. Here's something up ahead, water falling like a song. An everlasting stream, your river carries me home. Let it flow, let it flow. All my fountains for my soul how well they never will run dry I've rambled on my own never believing I would find an everlasting stream your river carries me home let it flow Good morning, church. I'm Catherine. I'm the director of student ministries here. A couple of announcements, but first, it's so nice to see all of you in person, even with masks on. 
Um, our first announcement is we have R and R boxes shipping off. Well, not shipping. Y'all are picking them up this time, um, but they are kicking off Advent edition. Each box will have four weeks of content in it, separated for you to be able to just open one and roll with the week. Um, they are available for pickup next Sunday, the 22nd or the 29th from 11 a.m. to noon or 5 p.m. to 6 p.m. And today is the last day to sign up. So if you haven't signed up yet, I highly encourage you. They're awesome. And I'm not just saying that because I'm a part of it. Um, the next announcement we have is Adventuring Together, which is next Saturday. Um, the Next Gen team will be headed to Armand Bayou Nature Center. So make sure you bring your snacks and your water to keep you hydrated because it's November, but it's still hot, um, and snacks to keep you nourished so you can go on your hike. If you have any questions about that or you want to sign up, email Kristen at clpc.org. Next, the poinsettias are coming. The Christmas poinsettias are available for reservation. Um, they are $20 to purchase, but you cannot pick them up until after the last service on Christmas Eve. If you have any questions, you can email Mindy at mindy at clpc.org. Lastly, our reminder, Sanctuary and Zoom. Sanctuary, please make sure you stay physically distant from anyone that you didn't come with. Please make sure you keep your mouse, mask over your mouth and your nose, um, and please hum along to the music. Zoom, please make sure that you stay muted, but sing as loud as you want, and keep those comments coming to Kristen. Um, I'd like to invite Jeremy to, our call, to do our call to worship. <laughs> Please join me uh, in a call of worship as projected on the screen. Great and marvelous are your deeds, Lord God Almighty. Who will not fear you, O Lord, and bring glory to your name? Thy goodness like a feather bind my wandering heart to thee. Prone to wonder, Lord, I feel it. Prone to leave the God I love. Here's my heart, Lord. Take and seal it. Seal it for Prone to wonder, Lord, I feel 
wounded, prone to believe the God I love. Here's my heart, Lord, take and seal it, seal it for thy courts above. worship team. Today's Old Testament reading comes from the book of Zephaniah, chapter 1, verse 7, and then verses 12 through 18. Be silent before the Lord God, for the day of the Lord is near. The Lord has prepared a sacrifice and consecrated his guests. At that time, I will search Jerusalem with lamps, and I will punish the men who are complacent, those who say in their hearts, the Lord will do no good, nor will he do ill. Their goods shall be plundered and their houses laid waste. Though they build houses, they shall not inhabit them. Though they plant vineyards, they shall not drink wine from them. The great day of the Lord is near, near and hastening fast. The sound of the day of the Lord is bitter, the mighty man cries aloud there. A day of wrath is that day, a day of distress and anguish, a day of ruin and devastation, a day of darkness and gloom, a day of clouds and thick darkness, a day of trumpet blast and battle cry against the fortified cities and against the lofty battlements. I will bring distress on mankind so that they shall walk like the blind because they have sinned against the Lord. Their blood shall be poured out like dust and their flesh like dung. Neither their silver nor their gold shall be able to deliver them on the day of the wrath of the Lord. In the fire of his jealousy, all the earth shall be consumed for a full and sudden end he will make of all the inhabitants of the earth. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Church, as we enter into our time of the confession of sin, I want to read for us 1 John chapter 1, verse 8. It says this, If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. Friends, with that in mind, uh, I invite us to pray this prayer of, con of confession that is projected behind me. Let us pray. God of love, in the wrong we have done, and in the good we have not done, we have sinned in ignorance. We have sinned in weakness. We have sinned through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry. We repent and turn to you. Forgive us and renew our lives through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Hear now our silent prayers of confession. Amen. Friends, hear now this promise from Scripture in the very next verse, in verse 9. It says, But if we confess our sins, he who is faithful and just will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Church, know this day that in Christ Jesus you are forgiven. And since God has forgiven us in Christ, let us forgive one another. The peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you.
brothers and sisters, um, we thank God for all he has given us. And I know we are still at a difficult time uh, in our lives now with um, the situation, the pandemic situation, um, which challenges our way of life, um, our resources and everything, affects us directly, uh, indirectly. But we still, with faith, uh, we still believe in God uh, for what he has given us, uh, all the talents, or the gifts, or the assets, or the investment. We are the caretakers of these um, uh, resources. As uh, we're gonna be reading also to, uh, our passage today, uh, ponder over Matthew 25, where we see uh, the man traveling and uh, he's distributing the talents to his servants. It also reminds us of the, these talents that uh, are given out uh, to, to these servants. Um, I also look at that as a way God is measuring how we utilize our resources. And um, with um, everything um, that is going on, we still um, praise God for whatever we have. And uh, we, at some point, we take a portion of what we have uh, to give back to God. There are many ways to uh, give. I uh, would like to encourage each one of you to give generously. For those who are worshiping with us here, um, you can give. Um, outside we have baskets, uh, collecting plates for that. And those who are worshiping with us uh, via Zoom, uh, there's also an easier way of uh, doing that. Uh, you can text 73256 and in the message line uh, type give CLPC. Once you do that, you send, it will um, give you a link to a secure website where you're able to, to give um, one time or whichever way you choose, you can automate. Please join me uh, in a, a prayer. Gracious God, we thank you for all the gifts that you've given us. We most, most importantly, we thank you for the gift of life. We thank you for the resources you have entrusted upon us. And at this point, uh, we take a portion of those resources to you to further your kingdom, to work in areas that we cannot uh, reach. We pray all this in the mighty name of your son, Jesus. Amen.
And when I come to die, and when I come to die, and when I come to die, give me Jesus. Give me Jesus. Amen. This is our greeting time. If you're on Zoom, we invite you to unmute yourself, switch to gallery view, and greet one another. If you're in the room here with us, uh, stay in your place, but uh, do turn around and wave to your neighbors. You can wave to the folks on Zoom. They're right up there on that hey, camera. Hi, Kathleen. Oh, it's good to see you. I can't get it, can I? I can't. Hi, Julia. 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 Hi, Great. We're getting used to this, aren't we? Yes. Are we good? Yeah, well, we don't want to get too used to it. I just, I just, if you're on Zoom, I just said to the people here in the sanctuary, we're getting used to this, and there were a few groans in the room, like, yeah, I don't know if we'll ever get used to this, but, but it's, it is great to be uh, in person and uh, to have 3D worship. I like to call it 3D worship to get to see, uh, see you all, so um, we're in a stewardship series that we are entitling What counts. And we've entitled this series, What Counts, for two reasons. Uh, Number one, all of the, aside from the connection to stewardship and financing and, uh, uh, you know, of of stewarding of our resources, really two reasons. All of the scripture texts uh, this month, during stewardship month, have numbers associated with them. So we began Matthew chapter 5, eight blessings last week. We talked about five bridesmaids uh, this week. We have five talents, so on and so forth. But the other reason why we're calling it What Counts is because on many different levels, we are all asking that question, what matters? What really counts? Uh, What's important to us? What's important to our families? What's important to our friendships, our relationships? What's important um, for us as a civil society? And most importantly, what's important uh, for us in our relationship with God and in the kingdom of God? So we spent the first week in Matthew chapter 5, and then the last three weeks of stewardship, we're looking at three different parables in Matthew chapter 25, Matthew chapter 25. And the subject matter for Matthew chapter 25, I just want to back out for a second, give some literary context for this. The subject matter for Matthew 25 is the final judgment and the consummation of, of all the age at the second coming of Jesus Christ. 
It's when Jesus comes back and the fullness of the kingdom uh, comes. And, and so this whole section really kind of gets started back in Matthew chapter 24, if you have your Bibles open, either here on, on Zoom. And so in uh, Matthew chapter 24, uh, the disciples are sitting with Jesus and they say, Jesus, tell us when these things will be. When will be the sign of your coming uh, and the close of the age? And so Jesus is responding to that uh, question. And he says a little bit later down in verse 36, he says, nobody's going to know, uh, 24 verse 36, concerning that day and hour, no one knows. Nobody's going to know when I come. If they say they know, then they don't know because uh, no one knows. Even the Son of Man doesn't know. It's only that, that, God, that God knows. And, um, and so the clincher really is in verse 44 of chapter 24. Therefore, you must be ready. Because we don't know when, when the Son of Man is coming back. We don't know when Jesus is going to come back. He's going to surprise us when he comes back. So be ready. Be ready for Christ's return. And so that's really the subject matter about being ready, being prepared as God's people for Christ's return. Last week, Josh preached a great sermon about the ten bridesmaids um, who were waiting for the bridegroom to come and get the wedding party started. Uh, five of those bridesmaids, maids were prepared to wait. Five of them were foolish and didn't wait. When the bridegroom was delayed, uh, the five that ran out of supplies were off getting supplies. Uh, the, the groom started the party with uh, other uh, bridesmaids and the other guests. And the other ones, the five that were unprepared, show up at the party late. And the master of the ceremony says, I don't, I don't recognize you. I don't know you. I invite you to go back and listen to that sermon if you missed it last week. So this week, we, uh, we have another story about how we prepare, and it's a story about entrusted resources. It's a story about entrusted resources. I want to tell you a story, something that happened to me years ago when I was in high school. My first, uh, one of my first paying jobs was as a lot boy for Ben Davis Chevy Olds Buick in Auburn, Indiana. And so as a lot boy, I was regularly entrusted with the car keys to brand new cars uh, on the lot to prepare them for delivery or to move uh, cars around on the lot and rearrange them to showcase different, uh, different vehicles. And it was great fun. You know, at first, of course, I was very cautious when I got behind the wheel of one of those brand new cars. I would make sure my seatbelt was on and the mirrors were adjusted and everything, and I would cautiously move the But, you know, after I'd been there for a while, you know, I'd hop in the car, and, you know, I didn't bother to, you know, waste a lot of time adjusting mirrors. Of course, it was important to make sure the radio was, was tuned to my favorite station and the air conditioning was on. And, uh, and so one day, uh, late in the day, I was juggling some cars around, rearranging, and I heard a loud, I heard a loud crunching noise on the back bumper, I thought no. Hopped out of the car, walked around to the back of the car, and um, in the back of the lot, in some kind of some tall grass, there was a fire hydrant, and I had backed into that fire hydrant, kind of crunched the whole the hole back in, and I was just, I was sick, uh, and and I actually left early from work that uh, night. I went home and didn't say anything to my parents about it. Just stewed about it over dinner that night. I called my friend Bill and told Bill what happened. And so I said, let's, let's go out and I'll, I'm going to show you the car that I wrecked. And so we drive out to the dealership and the car isn't there. The car, in fact, is in the body shop already being prepared. And so, and I hadn't said anything, but I'm, I'll, I'll finish that story here in a little bit, how that, how that story ends. But turn in your Bible, a little cliffhanger, to Matthew chapter 25 beginning in the 14th verse, as we hear this story about a man entrusting resources uh, to his servants. Hear the Word of God. For it will be like a man going on a journey who called his servants and entrusted to them his property. To one he gave five talents, to another two, to another one, to each according to his ability. Then he went away. He who had received the five talents went at once and traded them, traded with them rather, and he made five talents more. So also he who had two talents, the two talents made two talents more. But he who had received the one talent went and dug in the drown, ground and hid his master's money. 
Now, after a long time, the master of those servants came and settled accounts with them. And he who had received the five talents came forward, bringing five talents more, saying, Master, you delivered to me five talents. Here I have made five talents more. His master said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a little. I will set you over much. Enter into the joy of your master. Verse 22. And he also... And he also who had the two talents came forward saying, Master, you delivered to me two talents. Here I have made two talents more. His master said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a little. I will set you over much. Enter into the joy of your master. He also who had received the one talent came forward saying, Master, I knew you to be a hard man. Reaping where you did not sow and gathering where you scattered no seed. So I was afraid. Then I went and hid your talent in the ground. Here you have what is yours. But his master answered him, You wicked and slothful servant. You knew that I reap where I have not sown and gather where I uh, scattered no seed. Then you ought to have invested my money with the bankers, and at my coming I should have received what was my own with interest. So take the talent from him and give it to him who has the ten talents. For to everyone who has will more be given, and he will have an abundance. But from the one who has not, even what he has will be taken away. And cast the worthless servant into the outer darkness. In that place there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let's pray together and ask for the Holy Spirit to be our teacher. And so we do pray, come Holy Spirit and instruct us. Show us the truth of the Scripture as it points to Jesus in the real places where we live. And having encountered that truth, May we never be the same. We pray in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. So the story, Master's going away for a long trip, calls in his uh, three servants. Uh, he gives the first uh, servant, uh, gives the first servant, I brought along some props for us today, gives the first servant five talents, $500. Second servant comes in, he gives the second servant uh, $200. Third servant, he gives uh, $100. Immediately, the, the man who got the, the $500, he goes out, puts it to work, trades it, makes $500 more. Second servant, he goes out with the two uh, talents, uh, $200, and makes $200 more. But the third servant goes out and he uh, puts the $100 in a plastic bag, digs a hole, and buries it in his backyard. Well, long time passes and the master returns to settle accounts and servant number one comes before the master and says, look, boss, while you were gone, I doubled your money. And the boss is thrilled, the, the parable tells us. Servant number two comes forward, same thing again. Uh, I, you know, I, I, you gave me two talents. I made two more. Again, the boss is tickled silly, thrilled with this. Servant number three comes forward. Sir, you're not the easiest guy to work for. You know, you make tough deals and you have unreasonably high expectations and you don't take kindly to sloppy losses. Uh, if I had a little more cash to work with like those other guys, then maybe I would have taken some chances. But with just a hundred bucks, you know, I decided the best thing to do was just to play it safe. And so here's your hundred dollars back. Of course, the master isn't thrilled, is he? I think there's uh, two keys, at least, for understanding and interpreting this parable because there's a lot that's kind of troublesome about this parable, and it's hard to get, kind of get our minds around what's going on here. And, and the first thing that we might keep in mind is that a talent is not a skill or an ability. I mean, that's how we've come to know the word talent today. In fact, our understanding and our usage of the English word talent today actually comes from the widespread use of this parable. So that's why we talk today about skills and abilities in terms of talents uh, but talent, a talent in biblical times was a, a, a measurement of currency. 
measurement of currency. Does anybody happen to know, without looking at your study Bible, how much a, um, a talent is worth today's money? $100? Let's just do this. How many people think it's more? How many think it's um, $500? How many think it's, okay. How many think maybe it's $1,000 a, a talent? Maybe, maybe 5000 Okay, get this. One talent, one talent is equal to 20 years worth of a working person's wage. 20 years. One talent. I looked up on Wikipedia, and uh, they estimate that a talent by today's currency would be something like $1.4 million, all right? Now, I think that would be, I'd have to pour out several buckets worth of coins. I don't want to go out and get that many plastic coins. But it, I, I think one of the important things as we begin to approach this parable, if not the most important thing as we approach this parable, is to realize that we are dealing with an extreme abundance of resources. Each of the servants has been given an astounding abundance of resources to steward. And remember that uh, in each case, these talents that are given to the servants are above and beyond their uh, normal resources. Those those talents that the master gives to the servants weren't theirs to begin with. So this is above and beyond. So it's not like we should be thinking, oh, poor servant number three, he only got $1.4 million to work with. You know, he really just, he just didn't have much to play with. I mean, just imagine if you were to leave here today and and go home and tell your neighbor, yeah, Pastor Steve was giving out money today at church, and I only got $1.4 million. I, you know, I don't really know what I'm going to do with that for the kingdom. You know, you'd, you'd be, we'd be thrilled. So we're dealing with an astounding abundance of resources. And I really think that that is a key to understanding what's going on in this parable. You know, one of the ways that, one of the ways that we could take this passage is uh, strictly as a message about financial stewardship. And we're in stewardship season. We're considering what our pledges would be for uh, 2021 and making financial commitments. But the truth is, um, as we think about it in this way, no matter how few financial resources we have, you and I have, compared to somebody else, to others, the truth of the matter is that we have all been tremendously blessed. I would venture to say that nearly everyone in this room who is here today came in an automobile. I'm guessing that nobody here today had to, had to walk or to hitch a ride, um, you know, thumb a ride with somebody off the street. We probably all came here today in our own vehicles. I think the mere fact that the rest of you are watching, I don't know where the Zoom camera is, but uh, watching on Zoom, the mere fact that you're watching Uh, this worship service over a home computer or over your iPad or your phone is uh, significant. Most of us have drinkable water in the places where we live. Most of us have had something to eat today. Most of us will not have to worry about where we will sleep tonight. And quite frankly, those realities put us in the top tier of wealth in the world in which we live. Hopefully this week in the mail you've received a, um, and, and again, I, I just want to say that's, that's not to make, make us feel guilty or to put any kind of guilt trip on us. That's just to, that's just to acknowledge a reality of, of the resources, the abundance of resources that we have at our disposal as people who live in this time and place in this particular country and this particular part of the country. Hopefully, each of you received a stewardship uh, packet this last week in the mail, a stewardship brochure that talks a little bit about uh, what the plans are for this coming year, 2021, in terms of the session and our our budget planning. And inside of that packet, you got a commitment card that we will ask you to begin uh, filling out and submitting. In years past, we've done it all in one Sunday. We've handed out the card in worship. You've filled it out in worship, and we brought it forward. This, this year, everything's different, and so we're going to do a Commitment Sunday different this year. 
just invite you as you are ready to fill out your pledge to, uh, to, to mail that in or to sign up online with your, with your pledge. So that's, that's one way, obviously, that we can apply this passage. God has blessed us. How are we going to resource and, and steward the financial resources that God has given us for God's kingdom use? But I want to talk about something else as well and ask for your prayer about something. Increasingly, the leadership at our church, Clear Lake Presbyterian, is realizing that we have another kind of wealth that perhaps we have not been stewarding um, all that well. And it, it's a wealth of influence, perhaps a wealth of voice in the cause of racial justice in our world. There's a, an emerging understanding among the leadership that we have perhaps, like the third servant, done more hiding and burying than taking a hard look at ourselves and the world around us and our participation in some unjust systems in the world in which we live. That we perhaps have been content to let the cause of racial equality be someone else's job than our own. That we thought it was perhaps just enough to be a, a friendly and welcoming kind of a church to anybody who wants to join us rather than taking up some difficult conversations. And so over the last few months since this new wave of civil unrest in our country erupted this past summer after, the George, uh, after George Floyd's death, the session has been praying about what it would look like for us to put our talents to work. And quite honestly, we don't completely know what that looks like. And, and we're in a discernment phase about that and trying to figure that out. And, and uh, for some, we're going way too fast, and for others, we're going way too slow. Um, and I will say that we're not looking to be political, we're not looking to be divisive, but we are looking to be faithful. We're not looking to be uh, a divisive, and this issue can be so divisive, but the truth of the matter is that our world is already deeply divided. And ideas about race and class and equality are, are already tearing us apart. And what we're looking to do is was what, what part would God have us play in the quagmire of that division um, in the world in which we live? Many of us have been reading a book and participating in a discussion group called Be the Bridge. And one of the express goals of this study group and of the book is to be bridge builders between people divided by racial and cultural differences so that our neighborhoods can experience healing and transformation. That's really what we're uh, pursuing. And so my ask of you in this is that you would pray for us. Because this Tuesday night, the session is going to be looking at a document that a, a small writing team has um, kind of summarized a, a three, a three months of discussion as a session, and we've taken a document and tried to coalesce those thoughts down into a document, a, a statement of agreement, along with some very specific uh, accountable action plans that we can take as a session to begin to learn more, grow more, and, and find our voice, uh, our unique voice for Clear Lake Presbyterian Church in this con uh, conversation and in the, the issue of racial equality. Here's the last thing I want to say. Last thing I want to say is that whether it is stewarding our financial uh, pledge for next year, or whether we're talking about stewarding our resources of influence in the complex and complicated social issues of the day, the master's joy is at stake. The master's joy is at stake. You know, quite honestly, as I've poured over this passage, I'm not quite sure what to do with how this parable ends I just don't like it. I, I wish I could go and just rewrite the end because I, 
I, I, you know, I want at the end, I want the master to say to servant number three, oh, that's okay, you know, I know you were afraid, you know, it's, it's going to be all right. You know, I don't, I don't want the, the talent that he has had to be ripped out and given to somebody else. I don't want him, you know, to be thrown into the place of outer darkness where there's weeping and gnashing of teeth. I don't like the picture of, of a master God who is like that. And yet, friends, don't miss this. This is exactly how passionate God is about putting the world to rights. That's what's going on here. God hates sin because it robs creation's joy. The same master who punishes the wicked servant for burying his talent is the same master who is filled with joy twice over when the other two servants put to use what he has blessed them with. You see, friends, I think the real difference in the third servant is that he misunderstands the character of the master. He's fundamentally misunderstood the character of the master. That's the difference between the first two servants and the third servant. God hates sin. God hates sin, but he hates sin because it robs creation of its joy. Do you know the character of the master? So my friend Bill and I went that night. We saw that the, the car I had wrecked was in the body shop, and um, I knew the next morning I had to go and face the owner, Ben Davis, in his office. So I got up early that day and got into the office. I knew that Ben got there every morning at 7 o'clock. He was the first one in the office, and so I got in there before anybody else was there and knocked on his door. He waved me in. He said, Mr. Davis, I... Uh, I have something I need to tell you. Yesterday afternoon, toward the end of the day, I was moving a car and I, I, I hit a fire hydrant. And he stopped me in mid-sentence. <laughs> and with a big grin on his face, said, Steve, I, I already know. Um, uh, I, I found out last night, and we got it in the body shop and it's getting repaired. He said, you know, that's why we have insurance. I said, uh, don't let it happen again. And that was it. <laughs> let it go. I think I had misunderstood the, the character of, of my, my boss, maybe in a sim, similar way that, the, that the, the third servant in this parable misunderstands the character of the master. Friends, we've been blessed. We've been blessed and we've been entrusted with much for the sake of the master's joy. Let us pray together. God, I pray for anyone this morning in this room, anybody listening uh, today who may feel like they have gotten shortchanged. Anyone who is on the raw end of the, the deal, as it were, this morning. The one who is uh, looking at uh, somebody else who seems to have more than what they have. For the person this morning who is feeling afraid. For the person who wants to do more burying and hiding than they do of stewarding the gifts that you have given us. God, I pray that you would show us uh, your joy and help us to enter into the joy of, of serving you, of putting to kingdom use the resources that you have blessed us with that all of creation may be put to rights. We pray that you would order unruly powers, that you would feed and satisfy those who hunger and thirst for your righteousness. For we pray it all in the name of the one who is the Prince of Peace, the Lord Jesus Christ, who taught his disciples to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, 
and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. I'd like to invite us to stand as is our custom and turn and face the doors through which we are sent as God's people, sent to be agents of God's reconciling love in a hurting and broken world, sent to be heralds of the joy of the kingdom of God that is the master's as he is putting the world to rights. I want to remind you today uh, to stay uh, in your pew and to enjoy the postlude while the ushers come and release you uh, the same way that you have uh, you were shown in. So the Andrew ministers will come down the aisle and they'll show you out row by row um, when it is time to be dismissed. And if you need to stay in the sanctuary or would like to just be here uh, quietly for a while, you are more than welcome to do that. Just to indicate to the usher that you're not quite ready to leave yet. So, And we invite you to take your conversation outside. Do want to remind you that we have, uh, we have Sunday school coming up? Yes, yes we do. Well, you'll get the Sunday school announcement in the chat. And now receive God's blessing. Near or far, receive God's blessing. May the love of God, the fellowship of the Spirit, the abiding grace and joy of the Lord Jesus Christ be yours now and forever. Amen. Go in peace.